I'm filming this video in S-Log2 on a Sony RX100. There's a lot of myths and misinformation floating around YouTube about log footage. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of filming in log and how to color grade it in Final Cut Pro. I've done a few videos on this topic in the past, so check them out in the description below, but I still get a lot of questions from people wondering how they can get the best results in Final Cut Pro with log footage. So quickly, log profiles offer one main advantage over default picture settings, and that is dynamic range. You get more detail in the highs and in the lows. But log comes with a few major drawbacks. Number one, it can be hard to expose, and without an ND filter, your base ISO on most cameras is going to be bumped up significantly, so it can be hard to expose those highlights. Two, it requires tone mapping to be properly color graded in a Rec. 709 workspace, a standard workspace, which is what most of us use. And three, there's less color depth with 8-bit cameras, meaning that saturation can't be pushed as far across exposure values, leading to a flatter image. I do wanna say, if you're gonna shoot in log, try to shoot in 10-bit or higher because shooting in 8-bit is gonna cause you problems depending on how far you wanna stretch your footage and push your color in post. It can still be done. I do it all the time and I'm doing it in this video. However, it works much better and much easier for color grading if it's in 10-bit. Now enough talking, let's get to shooting, let's get out there, shoot some footage, and start color grading. that's enough of that. Let's get to color grading. Okay, so I have Final Cut Pro open and I have imported my S-Log video files here. You can see they're very flat. I have the full dynamic range here and I'm actually pretty impressed at what the little Sony RX100 was able to capture with dynamic range. I have three different files, three different scenarios here. First, me blabbering on and on about log footage. This is an interior shot. It was pretty well lit. I feel like I exposed pretty well for the skin tones in this one. Second shot is in a dark garage. I exposed for the bright um, e-bike light there, that ring light. I wanted that fully uh, detailed there so it wasn't too blown out. And you can see that it captured quite a bit of detail just scrubbing through this in that dark garage area. And then third and final shot, this is an exterior sunny day. Um, it was hard to expose for just because it was so bright out. So we'll touch on a few tricks uh, for S-Log or any other log file and how to get proper exposure and color grade in Final Cut Pro. Okay, so first things first, this is me. I'm gonna mark a keyframe shot here. We're gonna use this for the grade. I'm gonna make sure my inspector window is open and that it is set to general uh, view here. General view allows us to add a camera LUT. We are going to be applying the manufacturers, the Sony S-Log2 S gamut LUT here. That is going to tone map our footage, bring in the proper color values so that we can grade this in Rec. 709. And I am using a standard Rec. 709 monitor. We are not grading in wide gamut uh, just because I do not have a wide gamut display here. So we take a quick view of this footage, you'll notice that the highlights seem a little washed out. It seems a little bright here. Obviously the exposure is a little bit too high and that's because I overexposed slightly in camera, uh, but there is a very easy solution for this. We're just going to make a color adjustment. So first things first, Let's open up our color wheels. We're gonna make a quick exposure adjustment. I'm also gonna bring up my video scopes and my Luma waveform. This is gonna tell us where our exposure is in this broadcast safe zone. So I'm gonna bring my global exposure down a bit. One thing that the camera LUTs do sometimes if you overexpose, it will bring the midtones into the highlights quite a bit, especially with S-Log2. 
So all I'm doing is just dragging down those mid-tones to a much more manageable level, just about there. I think that's pretty good. All right, second, I'm going to add a color curve adjustment. This is going to allow me to fine tune my highlights and mid-tones here. So I'm gonna add two points, one for my mid-tones, one for my highlights. I'm going to drag my highlights down just a bit here, but I don't want plasticky skin. I can even push my mid-tones down just a little bit as well. And I'm gonna bring up my shadows just a little bit back to kind of where they were. All right, now that I've applied my exposure adjustment, I am going to white balance my image. I try to do this as best I can in camera, so it saves me a lot of time in post. This image is looking pretty balanced. We're gonna go ahead and add another color wheels adjustment. It looks like the temperature might be just a tad on the cool side, so I'm gonna warm it up just maybe a tad. And it looks like it has a little bit of a green tint. This is just something that a lot of people notice on Sony cameras. So we're gonna add in a little magenta there, maybe give it five points so you can see the before and the after for that white balance adjustment. All right, at this stage, I am ready for my look grade. I can start really getting into the color grading aspect here of my footage. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good. It does look a little bit flat. The colors look a little bit flat and you'll notice, it's not too bad in this clip, but you'll notice that the colors can be a little bit blotchy, especially um, in the, in the mid-tones and the highlights, uh, just because this is 8-bit footage. We only have 256 color values or levels or whatever. It's not like 10-bit where we have a significantly larger amount of color values mapped to the exposure range, which can lead to some blotchy coloring if we try to push the saturation too much. For instance, let me push the mid-tone saturation a little bit. And you can see if I start pushing this, if I zoom in, you can see I can start to get a little bit blotchy color on my skin if I start pushing that saturation. That's due to 8-bit footage. All right, so final adjustment here. I'm gonna go back to my effects view and I'm going to add a custom LUT drag it onto my clip. And the LUT that I'm gonna be using today is an Impulse LUT. This is a Rex 709 uh, film emulation LUT. Really like these. Um, I'm gonna go with the Fuji Superior 200. You see I apply that LUT. It looks pretty nice. The colors look a little bit pushed too far. So I'm gonna back off the mix to about halfway. And I'm pretty satisfied with that image there. I'm gonna turn off my video scopes, give us a better view. All right, let's go through here, do a before and after, turn off all my effects adjustment, go back, remove the camera LUT that has tone mapped our footage to Rec. 709. Right now, this is S-Log straight out of the camera, no transform or color adjustment. We're gonna go through, apply our camera LUT. That's gonna bring us into Rec. 709. We're gonna go through these effects add an exposure adjustment. See how much detail we were able to recover. A lot of people complain about the blown out, washed out highlights that are lost. We're able to recover those just fine. Second adjustment, exposure adjustment, fine tune those highlights and mid-tones. Third, we're gonna white balance our image, get rid of that green. And then finally, our look LUT. This is the Film Contrast Fuji Superior 200 LUT that we apply. Looks pretty nice. All right, second clip here. This is one of my favorites here. This is the e-bike in the dark garage I've exposed for this ring light here. So once again, open up Inspector, apply a camera LUT, the S-Log LUT. So first things you notice is the light looks washed out. It looks blown out. This looks way overexposed, and that is all recoverable just fine. Just takes a few steps here. So let's open up our color wheels here. We're going to make an exposure adjustment with our global adjustment here. Oh, almost forgot. Video scopes. Open up our Luma waveform. Bring it into broadcast safe zones just between 0 and 100. Those are just recommendations, by the way. Okay. Brought it into 
safe zones here. Again, the mid-tones have been pushed up way into the highlights, so we're gonna pull those down quite a bit. See, way over dramatic. Start bringing them up just a tad to about there. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Maybe we'll bring the shadows up just a tad as well. So there's the before, and there's the after of the exposure adjustment. We're gonna make a secondary exposure adjustment, a color curve adjustment. This is just gonna fine tune our highlights and midtones. Again, I'm gonna add two points, one in the middle, one for the highlights here. Drag the highlights down just a bit. I'm gonna zoom in to show you what this does. All right, so we've got our headlight there. This is the before, and we're gonna, we're gonna give it just a little bit more detail. Maybe drag, maybe drag those midtones down just a bit here, and then add a little bit more back to the shadows. So that fine tune, before, after. Finally, we're gonna give this another color wheels adjustment, and this is going to white balance. Again, I do most of this in camera, so I don't have to do it as much in post. It's a little cool, so we're gonna give a little warmth back to the image. And again, just maybe a slight green tint. We're gonna bump this up maybe two points into the magenta range. So here is the before, I don't know if you can even see this, before, after, before, after. Just a slight green tinge that we're getting rid of. And finally is our look LUT. We're gonna apply our custom LUT here and we're gonna apply that film contrast, film emulation, Fuji Superior FC LUT here. Already that looks pretty good. I really like that look, but it's a little bit too dramatic here. So I'm going to bring down the mix just a bit. And a few things I wanna point out, again, because this is 8-bit footage, it's not too noticeable, but if we zoom in on some of the coloring here, let's go over to the reds. You'll notice that the red looks a little splotchy, the red, the yellow, that's just a result of 8-bit footage not having enough color values uh, to map to exposure. Again, not too noticeable. If I was really picky on this, I could do a specific hue and saturation adjustment and remove some of those red warmer colors here, but for this purpose, I don't really care. All right, let's do a before and after. Turn off all of our effects layering here, our effects adjustment. Go back, remove our camera LUT. Go to our view here, drop the video scope so you can see better full screen. All right, step one, log file straight out of the camera. Step two, apply our camera LUT so that we don't have to do this manually. I know people like to do this manually and tone map S-Log to Rec. 709 themselves, but I think they're insane. If you like doing that in your free time, all the power to you, but I think it is entirely unnecessary. We're gonna make our exposure adjustment, bring it into broadcast safe zone. Just look before, way too washed out, way too bright after. Look at all that detail that we were able to recover. All right, second adjustment. Fine tune the exposure. Third adjustment, white balance. Final adjustment, look lot. This is our color grade. Pretty nice. Before, after for our exposure and grading. Looks pretty nice. I will play through this and point out a few things. This is another aspect of 8-bit log footage. Let's go into our shadows here. Blow that up. Let's look at the ground in this back corner, this dark corner here. I'll play through this. You can notice it's, it's grainy, and even though there's detail there, it's gonna give us noise. It's gonna introduce noise just because this is 8-bit S-Log. Just something that we have to live with. If I wanted to, I could denoise this in Final Cut Pro. There's a denoise effect that I do apply for 8-bit log footage. All right, final clip and most complicated from a grading standpoint. This is a classic example of when people say that applying a camera LUT to transform to tone map log footage to Rec. 709 is going to make you lose detail, blow out your footage, and make it unrecoverable. Boom. And that's like, if we look at our video scopes, that's exactly what it looks like. Look how, how it is in the highlights here. Everything is way stretched out, way overexposed, way too bright. But look, 
the highlights are not clipped here. If, if I look at my Luma waveform, my highlights are still there. They're just outside of my safe zone, so we have to make a few adjustments. So number one, what do we do? I like to open up my color wheels, start with my exposure adjustment, bring the global back down into our safe zone. All right, there's not too much else we need to do here except bring down the midtones. Midtones, again, they're pushed into the highlights. That's a little dramatic, so I'm gonna back off just a tad here. All right, before and after exposure, before, after. Now we're gonna add a curve adjustment. Luma curve, I'm gonna add a point in the middle and a point for my highlights. I'm gonna bring the highlights down a tad and I start seeing clouds. So I'm gonna zoom in. And this is what's great and just so impressive about S-Log in a camera, even if it's an 8-bit RX100 that I got for like a few hundred bucks. This is pretty wild that I'm able to recover detail in the highlights so we can see those clouds. Look at those. Look, we can, if we really wanted to expose for those clouds, we could, we could do that. Look at all that detail. It's still here. None of it's clipped. We were able to recover all that detail. But that darkens up the rest of our image, so we don't need to go that far. I'm just going to bring the highlights down just a tad. Midtones look okay around there. Shadows, I'm just going to, just going to bump the shadows up. All right, secondary adjustment before and after for fine tuning. Now, third adjustment. We're gonna introduce another color wheel. This is our white balance. Again, this image looks pretty good. I white balanced in camera. It's a little cool. I'm gonna warm it up just a tad and I'm gonna bump it over because it's a little green. All right, fine tuning, but there's the before and there's the after for our white balance adjustment. Now we're at a good place where we can apply our grade, start grading the footage. And for this purpose, again, I'm just gonna use just a look LUT here. It's a film emulation LUT that I like to use just to give it a consistent look. But before, let's do a before and after of our effects exposure and white balance. Before, after, looking pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna apply that custom LUT, Rec 709. Fuji Superior Film Contrast goes on. It's looking pretty nice. I will point out a few things. At full mix, you can start to see some color banding happening in the sky here. You can start to see here's some color banding and that is just, again, a result of 8-bit footage. People saying that it's hard to color grade. So if you are color grading 8-bit footage, just know you can't push it too much. You can't give it too dramatic saturation across full exposure. So we're gonna back off about halfway and then fit that back. All right, there is the before and after the final grade. We're gonna turn off all of our adjustments here and we are going to show you a before and after. Make this a little bit bigger. Turn off that camera LUT. All right, so we have log footage straight out of the camera. You can see quite a bit of dynamic range here with a little bit of clouds. We're gonna be able to recover those just fine even though, we're, even though we apply a camera LUT to start our grade. All right, so effects. First, we do exposure adjustment, bring it into those safe zones. Second, curve adjustment, fine tune the highlights and the midtones. Third, make sure we have our proper white balance. And then finally, we apply our grade. All right, thanks for watching. That was a few examples of how to color grade log footage in Final Cut Pro using a Rec. 709 monitor and Rec. 709 workspace. That's my preferred way to do it. I find it's super easy once you apply a camera LUT with just a few basic exposure adjustments and either putting on a look LUT uh, and just leaving it as is, or if we wanted to, we could apply our own unique look, uh, but this is just a great starting point. So let me know if you have any questions, comments down below. Thanks for watching.